Good morning. It's Saturday morning, April the 11th, 2020, the day before Easter Sunday. I'm Pastor Mike Custer, the pastor of Bible Baptist Church in Grand Forks, North Dakota. And I'm, I'm happy to be able to spend a few minutes with you this morning about a very important biblical subject. You know, we talk a lot and think a lot about blessings, and we really do want God's blessings in our life. We like it when good things happen to us. And the Bible talks about somebody being blessed, and it happens to be the same word as the focus we're going to consider this morning about blessing the Lord. Same word in the scriptures, but when we're being blessed, it's talking about us receiving some benefit from God. And it seems like we spend an awful lot of our prayer time and request time just asking for God to do something for us, to bless us, to give us some kind of benefit. However, the Bible says, bless the Lord. And we're going to focus our attention this morning in Psalm 103. And in that Psalm, that phrase, bless the Lord, occurs five times in the one Psalm. And when it is given a divine uh, application, bless the Lord, it means uh, not seeking a benefit as we would ask God to bless us, but it means to act, to give God an honor as, to bestow an act of adoration upon him. And the Bible says we ought to bless the Lord. We ought to adore him. We ought to worship and reverence him. It's kind of the same term as the word worship, which means to prostrate in homage, to do reverence or to stoop. And it's, it's an honor to God when we reverence him in that way. And the Bible says, bless the Lord. Let me read to you some verses from Psalm 103. Verse 1 says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. And the, the psalm is a wonderful psalm about the goodness of God and about the salvation that he so freely offers to all who will repent, that is, submit and surrender to him and trust Jesus Christ as Savior. What a wonderful thing. The Bible even talks about the fact in this psalm that God doesn't deal with his children after their sins nor reward them according to their iniquities, because if they're saved, they're forgiven. Those sins are forgiven and God has removed them from as far as the east is from the west, the Bible says. And what a, what a great thing God does in his mercy and grace for those who know and love him. But consider this fact. The Bible says in that psalm, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. In other words, we should reach out to God and honor him and adore him and perform these acts of adoration, what would be a way we could bless God? Well, we could bless God by being a blessing to somebody else, rather than just always thinking of what someone can do for us. As I said, we often think about what, what we need and what blessings we might ask God to bestow upon us, but how often do we think of it the other way around? What could I do to bless the Lord? How could I worship him? How could I adore him? How could I do something for God that will be a help and a blessing to him. And I'm thinking about another psalm in Psalm 99, where, where the Bible teaches this thing about worshiping God and honoring him with worship. And in Psalm 99, uh, we read much about the fact that he's a holy God and he is worthy of all of our worship. Listen to verse 9. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. And that just simply reminds us that he is worthy of any homage, of any sacrifice, of any surrender, of any honor that we could bestow upon him. Have you thought about worshiping the Lord? Have you thought about thanking him for what he's done in your life? rather than just always asking him for something. And don't get me wrong, the Lord does want us to make a request of him and pray about everything. But just be careful that your prayer is not so one-sided 
that it's only asking, asking, asking for things for yourself. Remember to honor and worship and praise the Lord. He's a good God. He's a gracious God. He's so kind and so merciful to us. And we don't really deserve anything from him, but he extends great benefits to us. He blesses us. And so in return for that, certainly because of our gratitude and because of the love we have for the Lord, we ought to honor him and bestow upon him acts of adoration rather than just asking God for everything that we want at any particular time. And we all have needs. I understand that we all uh, wish things would be differently, would be different than they are. And so we pray about things and we ought to, we ought to pray about those things. But in the midst of all of that, don't forget to honor the Lord and worship him and give him the respect and reverence that he is due. Thank you for tuning in today and listening. God bless you today. Goodbye.